Hello and welcome to the video number seven of the Common Premises UN Info Platform Training. In this video, we are going to review the second part of the premise attribute step, namely the occupant level data. The objective of this section is to complete the data for all occupants of the premises, projects or initiatives. For the premises, this part has already been pre-populated from the existing UNSMS database. It is composed of two steps. First, verifying the occupant list, and then completing the occupant level data. During the first step, the CPC and the CPWG members should verify the list of occupants of the premises, project, or initiative. At this stage, an occupant can be added or deleted. To add an occupant, you should click on this particular button, Add Occupant, before entering the organization and the name of the state occupant. To delete an occupant, you should click on the button Delete, which is located at the very end of the occupant information. The next step, namely completing occupant data, should be performed by the agency focal point who should enter the data for its own entity. Entering this data can also be performed by the CPWG member or the CPC. Please note that occupants are the UN entities' individual offices and that there might be several offices from the same entity in a given premise. Let's take an example. If we have a premises with three offices, two offices from the WFP and one office from IFAD, then we have three occupants. So concretely, which data do we need to enter for each occupant? First, the organization name, as well as the occupant name, which should be uniquely recognizable. Then the office type, from the drop-down. The office space in square meters being the gross area as per official records in agreements or MOAs or equivalent. And the office capacity in number of rock station. For those last two fields, let me precise that we are talking about the occupied space and capacity of the individual occupants only, not of the entire premises. Then it's time to enter a short description of the office, such as WFP regional office located inside the UN compound, third floor of building A. Then you need to enter whether the office is the common services manager, entering yes when the UN office provides the service of overseeing the facilities management of the premises. Then you need to enter potential restrictions to relocate this office. Please note that a justification document is required if you select a restriction to relocate. In case you select other restriction, you will need to specify the restriction on the field appearing on the right.
Then it is time to enter the current work modality from the drop down choices, as well as the current number of desks per personnel. Please note that we need a number between 0 and 1. For instance, if we enter 0 0.5 and we have 20 employees, it means that we have 10 desks for the 20 employees. The next step is to enter the future work modality, as well as the expected future number of desks per personnel, still a number between 0 and 1. Then you need to fill in the number of national and international personnel as of today. And in the table below, you will be asked to provide the detail per grade of the current number of personnel, as well as of the estimated future number of personnel five years from now. After entering the data, you can see on the right that the current space needs and the future space needs are automatically derived from the current number of personnel and from the estimated future number of personnel. The next table is only a four information table. Basically, this table automatically calculates the area required for support functions based on the total number of people. Finally, the last office level data to be inputted are the rental and operational costs as applicable. Please note that all fields under cost are mandatory. Therefore, for the cost not applicable, please enter zero. Once all the, the data has been entered, it's time to click on save. Thank you very much for listening to this video. For the next video, we will review how to enter the contractual agreement part of the premise attributes step.